All right, 4.3, reciprocal trigonometric ratios. All right, we're going to look at the reciprocal trig ratios. We know the primary trig ratios to be SOHCAHTOA. The reciprocal trig ratios are as follows. Cosecant theta, which is equal to the hypotenuse over the opposite, which is equal to 1 over sine. So it's the reciprocal of sine. Secant theta is equal to hypotenuse over adjacent, which is equivalent to 1 over cosine. So again, secant theta is the reciprocal of cos theta. One, so it's equal to 1 over cos theta. Cotangent theta is equal to adjacent over opposite which is equal to 1 over tan theta. So one more time, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, is the flip of sine, secant is the flip of cosine, and cotangent is the flip of tan. The idea here is that cosecant and sine, ne the reciprocals do not begin with the same letter. Cosecant and sine do not begin with the same letter, so they are reciprocals of each other. Secant and cosine are reciprocals of each other, they don't begin with the same letter. And finally, cotangent and tan do not, and it's very, much, very easy to figure out that cotangent belongs with tan. What we need to do now is we have to use this to be able to solve problems. Example 1 says, determine the value of A such that cosecant of A is equal to 8, cosecant secant of B is equal to negative 5 over 2, and cotangent of C is equal to negative 5 over 16. So basically you're going to determine the value of A, B, or C. It's determine the value of the angle so that the angle is between 0 and 360 degrees. So for the first example, we see cosecant A. We need to convert cosecant A to 1 over sine A. 1 over sine A is equal to 8. Now, we have a fraction on one side and a whole number on the other. The idea is to create two fractions on both sides so that we can cross multiply. I can make 8 into a fraction of 8 over 1. When I do that, I can now cross multiply. I get 1 is equal to 8 sine a. That means sine a is equal to 1 over 8. We need to now determine the value of a. So we take the sine inverse of 1 over 8 and we find out that the a has value of 7.1808 degrees. Now, is that the only possible value? 7.1808 degrees is in the first quadrant. Sine is positive. We can find out, because the angle can be anywhere from 0 to 360 degrees, that we can find out that the other value of A has to be in the second quadrant, because that is where sine is positive. So. Remember the cast rule. Sine is positive in the first and second quadrants. So we need now to determine the other angle. The other angle is going to be 180 minus 7.1808 so that you get the value so that you get the value 172.8192 degrees. Let's try and find the value of secant b. Find the value of b. Well, secant is equal to 1 over cos b, and that equals negative 5 over 2. Cross multiply, and you get, and divide, you will have 1 times 2, which is 2, times equals negative 5 times cosine b. We need to move the negative 5 over to the other side, and that's how we get 2 over negative 5 is equal to cosine b. 
What you have to do is find the inverse because we're finding an angle. Remember to find an inverse, we must sorry, to find an angle, we must do the inverse. We find out that B is equal to 113.5782. That angle turns out to be in the first quadrant. The second angle is for the value of when sorry, this, let's look at the first angle. The first angle is 113.6 roughly. We need to find the other one and that other angle some people figured out is that 113.6 is the negative value of that angle so therefore we can take 360 minus the 113.6 and that should give us our positive angle because we're adding a full circle rotation so that angle turns out to be 246.4218 alright let's look at the last one 1 over tan c is equal to negative 5 over 16 cross multiply and divide, you're going to get 16 over negative 5 is equal to tan c. Tan inverse, and you find out the c is equal to negative 72.6460. How does that help us? Well, what we can do, and we write the coordinate, is determine the negative angle. The negative angle turns out to be in the fourth quadrant, because the negative angle is also measured from the positive x-axis, but it's going in a clockwise direction. So, the value of C for one of the angles is going to be 360 minus 72.6460, which turns out to be 287.3540 degrees. And then we have to determine the third one, sorry, the, the other main angle, the two angles, the other angle, and then we determine that by looking at the expression and we see that it must be in the second quadrant that we need the angle. So the first one was in the first quadrant, the second, sorry, in the fourth quadrant, and now we have to find it in the second quadrant, and we determine that that value is going to be 107.3540 degrees. I'll leave it up to you to figure out how we got those values, but the idea, folks, is that that is the answer that you should be getting. All right, next. Example number two. The point negative 630 lies on the terminal arm of an angle in standard position. Determine the exact expressions for the six trigonometric ratios for the angle and the value of theta. So we need the six ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, as well as our new three favorites, cosecant, secant, and uh, cotangent. All right. All right, let's look at how we have to do this. First of all, draw out the Cartesian plane and find point P. If all of you are looking at this, you'll see that point P is negative 16.30 and it's found in the second quadrant. Using Pythagorean theorem we can determine the R value. The R value in here is going to be the magic number of 100, uh, sorry, 34. Alright, so we get that R is equal to 34. Remember it's positive not negative, so we only have to look at one value. So we have our x, our y, and our r value. Let's determine the six tr trigonometric ratios, which are sine theta, cos theta, tan theta, cosecant theta, secant theta, cotangent theta. Those are equal to 30 over 34, that's y over r, y is 30, r is 34, 30 over 34 is a fraction, but it needs to be reduced. 30 over 34 reduces to 15 over 17. Cosine theta is equal to x over r. 
So that's negative 16 over 34, which reduces to negative 8 over 17. 10 theta is equal to 30 over negative 16, which reduces to negative 15 over 8. Even though the 30 didn't have the negative, when you reduce it, the negative automatically floats to the numerator of any fraction. Cosecant theta is equal to the flip of sine, which is 17 over 15. Secant theta is equal to negative 17 over 8. And finally, cotangent theta is equal to negative 8 over 15. So those are the six trigonometric ratios. Next, you're to determine the value of theta. Theta is equal to the sine inverse of 15 over 17. What we're doing is finding the theta as a reference angle. The reference angle is always determined from the ratio that is positive. So this ratio, folks, this is the ratio that's positive. That's the value we're going to use to determine the angle as the reference angle. So our reference angle is 61.9275. Now we need to find this standard position angle, or SP. Remember that 61.9275 is our reference angle. Our standard position angle is 180 minus 61.9275 and that gives us 118.0725 degrees. So that is our angle in standard position. All right, folks, that's everything. That's your last example. Get to work, and any questions, bring them to me tomorrow. Have a numerical night.